Hey guys, I hope you're ready for some blood and heart action today since we're going to look at the cardiovascular system. You're expected to know the different parts of the system, the function of the overall system, and the function of each part, and mostly about the different parts of the heart. Lastly, you need to know the pathway for blood flow through the cardiovascular system. So you need to be able to trace the blood flow for example, uh, when the blood leaves the heart, um, when the blood leaves the left ventricle, where does it go? Or if the blood leaves the right ventricle, where does it go next? Now, you may see uh, T's study manuals and mention this system as the circulatory system. Now, the cardiovascular system, uh, again, based on the name, you know that uh, it's, it includes the heart, right? That's the cardio part, and the blood vessels, which is the vascular part. Um, but the T's study manual uh, includes the lymphatic system as well, which I will review in more detail when we get to the immune system, because I think the lymphatic system has uh, an important role in the protection of the body in, in terms of immune functions. So I prefer to put the lymphatic system along with the immune system. So there will be more information about the lymphatic system later. But for now, I just want to mention the function of the lymphatic system related to circulation. So the lymphatic system has a network of lymphatic vessels, right, along with some of the lymphal organs and tissues. Now, for the lymphatic vessels, their job is to pick up lymph and circulate the lymph through the lymph nodes, the lymphoid organs, and tissues, and then eventually drain the lymph or return the lymph back to the cardiovascular system, back to the blood. So that's the job. Now you're gonna ask why, wh where's the lymph from, right? What is lymph? Now, um, when you look at tissues, you know, there are tissues are made up of cells, right? So all those are cells. And then the spacing between the cells, that's called interstitial space, inter interspatial space. Now, you can imagine there are blood vessels going through the tissues, right? Because they have to uh, supply the tissues with the blood, which contains oxygen and nutrients. So the blood vessels, when they get to tissues, they become the super small blood vessels, right? Which are called the capillaries. The capillaries do not have a very thick wall. So the wall, the blood vessel walls are super thin. So because of there's a little blood pressure and that pressure can push a fluid and some small molecules out of the blood. They're now interstitial fluid. They become interstitial fluid. Now, you can't let this happen without doing anything, right? Because you can imagine there's just going to be more fluid coming out of the blood, right? Accumulating in the tissue, that's going to cause edema, which basically means swelling. And also, uh, this will reduce your blood volume, right? Which is also not a good thing. It can uh, decrease your blood pressure. So you need to have a system to pick up the leaked fluid and return the fluid back to the blood, right? So that prevents edema, that prevents the drop of uh, blood pressure, prevents the, the loss of blood. So that's the job for the lymphatic system. I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use this uh, yellow color to draw the lymphatic vessels. Now, just like a, you know, the, the capillaries, uh, there are the, these small lymphatic vessels kind of going through the tissues. So the, the lymphatic vessel is a little bit different. So the end is more open, more open. So it can pick up the excessive fluid from the interstitial space, right? And once the, the fluid, the interstitial fluid goes into the lymphatic vessels, now they become lymph, lymph. And usually a lymph has this kind of light yellow color. Okay? All right, and then lymph is going to, uh, just like a blood, a lymph also goes one way. It does not go back. Okay? It is going to circulate you know, in your body, right? blah, blah, blah. And then eventually it's going to go back to some specific locations, a one on each side of the body, and that's kind of the junction of the internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein. So the lymphatic vessels will eventually deliver the lymph back to the junction of those two blood vessels. And 
um, it, it returns the lymph back to the blood. Okay, so you can see this is a very kind of intricate, very well designed system. All right, now if you combine the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system together, that's going to be the circulatory system. All right, there are four main functions for the circulatory system. Nutrient distribution, well known that blood can bring in oxygen and the nutrients, amino acids, electrolytes, glucose okay, to uh, the tissues and cells of your body. And at the same time, they, they will pick up metabolic waste from the cells, right? For example, carbohydrates and some of the metabolic, other metabolic waste such as urea, which is the metabolic waste from protein metabolism. Okay. Uric acid, that's from nucleic acid, like DNA, RNA, right? When you metabolize those uh, substances, that's going to generate uric acid. Next function is communication. The blood is the highway system of your body, right? It's, it, it can get to pretty much every part of your body. So it's a perfect delivery system. When the cells need to communicate, especially the long distance communication, for example, your thyroid hormone, your thyroid gland secretes a thyroid hormone, and the thyroid gland regulates the metabolism through the thyroid hormones. Now the thyroid hormones have to be able to reach you know, all parts of your body to, to act on the cells, right? To control their, uh, to influence their metabolism. And use the blood to transport those chemical messengers, those hormones, and bring them to their target cells and tissues, right? Which could be really far from the original gland. Last function is about protection. And both cardiovascular and the lymphatic systems participate in this particular function. Blood has a lot of immune molecules and cells. So usually those things just kind of, you know, kind of patrol your body through the blood, right? That usually they just um, go with the circulation in the blood. Once there's any injury, tissue injury or infection, they can be brought to the site of the injury and they will get into the fight, right? To protect our body to, to fight the pathogens. And the lymphatic system also kind of participates in this protection function because as the lymph circulates in your body, right, it goes through uh, different stations. I like to call them stations, which are basically lymph nodes, lymphoid organs, and the tissues. And in those places, you have immune cells, right, T cells, B cells, and macrophages. So those immune cells can inspect what's in the lymph, right? If there are any pathogens or any, any foreign invaders, those um, immune cells will be alert, alerted. They can activate the immune response. They can you know, try to find, they can uh, fight the pathogens, right? Try to kill them, take them out. Right. Now, before we move on to the heart structures, I want to introduce a few terms real quickly. Now, these terms are critical to understand how the heart works. And also, you will see questions on these terms on T's. So make sure you know these terms really well. You know how to differentiate these terms. The first set of terms is oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. This oxygenated blood has a high oxygen level. That's the blood that um, has gone through the gas exchange at the lungs. Okay. At the lungs, there's the gas exchange. So the blood in the lungs will pick up oxygen that you just inhale in and they will dump CO2 and then you exhale CO2, right? So after the lungs, the blood will become the oxygenated blood. Deoxygenated blood, D means none, right? So it doesn't have a lot of oxygen. And that's the blood that just completes the systemic circuit What is that? Basically, just think of the blood that just um, has it circulated through the entire your body. Uh, it's uh, going through all the tissues. So they deliver, they have just delivered oxygen and they have just picked up 
the CO2 from the tissues and all the cells. So that's the deoxygenated blood. So make sure you know the difference between oxygenated and deoxygenated. And also from now on, I'm going to refer the oxygenated blood as the good blood. Now, it's not because the oxygenated blood is really the good blood. All blood is good. But I just figured that it's easier to use a shorter term. It's easy to say. It's quicker for your brain to respond to, uh, to react to, and also just easier to remember. Um, and I'm going to refer to the deoxygenated blood as the bad blood. Okay. All right. Now. The next set of terms, those are the arteries and veins. Arteries take blood away from the heart. So this may be something that you can remember. A in arteries, also A in away. So that's the blood going away from the heart. So that's the job for arteries. They take blood away from the heart. For the veins, they return blood to the heart. So they are going to move the blood toward the heart. Okay, so that's what veins do. Now, a lot of people get confused they, that they think all the arteries have oxygenated blood and all veins have deoxygenated blood, and that's not true. Okay, so that's false. For example, um, when we talk about the heart structures, we'll mention a little bit of this, but when we get to the uh, pulmonary circuit, the systemic circuit, you will see that some arteries, for example, pulmonary arteries, I'll just spell it out, pulmonary arteries actually have deoxygenated blood. Again, I'm just going to call it the bad blood. And the veins, pulmonary veins, they actually have oxygenated blood. Oops, the good blood. Okay, now let's look at the structures of the heart. Now, when you first look at this diagram, you're going to be like, oh, this is a lot of information. There's no way I can remember all this, but you actually can. So I have crossed off some of the structures that are probably not going to be on the keys. Those are some of the minor, minor structures you can see. So you do not need to worry about those structures. And also, um, I kind of categorized different groups of structures with the different colors. So you can see the yellow suggests it's going to be a blood vessel connected to the heart, and blue is going to be a heart chamber, green, that's going to be a heart valve. All right, there are some structures that are uh, kind of in this gray box, um, and the reason that I don't think they are as important as these structures, I haven't really seen any questions on the different layers of the heart wall, but I want to kind of point them out in case you see a question. The heart wall consists of three layers. The inner lining is called endocardium. Now, endo means inside, right? So that's the innermost layer. That's the inner lining of the heart wall. Um, sometimes people may get infection, inflammation in endocardium, and that's, con that's called endocarditis. Remember the itis? That means some kind of inflammation. Um, drug addicts sometimes can get endocarditis, and that's because if they share needles with other people um, and the needles are not clean, they can get infection um, in, in the heart, right, brought in by the blood. So that could lead to endocarditis. The middle layer, this, the thickest layer that's composed of uh, cardiac muscle tissue, that's called a myocardium, myocardium. And then the outer layer, the outer most layer is called epicardium. So that's the three layers of the heart wall. All right, now let's look at all the other more important structures. Uh, so I grouped them into chambers, connecting blood vessels, and the last, the four valves. Now, I don't want to use this diagram uh, for the first time because this diagram just looks too overwhelming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the next slide, which is a blank slide, to draw the structures. And as you follow me, you know, one by one, it can make things a little bit simple so that you're not intimidated by the amount of information. Oh, so let's draw the heart. 
Now, a lot of people draw this when they draw a heart. That's cute, but that's not the actual shape of the heart. And we draw the heart using the anterior view. Anterior view. You remember the anatomic position, right? That's we're looking at the anterior view. Now, when we look at the anterior view, be aware, keep in mind that this is going to be the right side, okay? And then this is going to be the left side. All right, now the heart has a four chambers. There we go, four chambers. The top two chambers, the two superior chambers are called atria. Singular is atrium. So this is going to be the right atrium. This is going to be the left atrium. Oops. The top two chambers, the two atria, they are receiving chambers. Receiving chambers, meaning they receive blood from different blood vessels. And then the two atria will push blood into the two inferior chambers, the two bottom chambers, which are called the ventricles. The right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. There you go. So there you go. That's the four chambers of the heart. You got it. All right. Now let's look at connecting blood vessels. There are going to be a few, but don't be uh, overwhelmed. You know, just follow me and, you know, I mean, you will get all of them. So let's start from the right side. We're always from the right side first. Now I'm going to use a blue color because blue is usually for deoxygenated blood. So the next two blood vessels I'm going to draw, they contain deoxygenated blood or the bad blood. So they return the bad blood back to the right atrium of the heart. So these two blood vessels are called the superior vena cava, which is going to be on the top, so it's going to uh, go to the right atrium from the top. And it usually returns deoxygenated blood from the head, from the neck, from the shoulder, from the arm, back to the right atrium. And there is another blood that goes toward the right atrium from the bottom. So that's called the inferior, oh, forgot the entire word, inferior vena cava. So inferior vena cava will return the bad blood from the rest of the body back to the right atrium. All right, so that's the two blood vessels that return bad blood back to the atrium. Okay, now the right atrium is going to push blood into the right ventricle, right? So you can see it's still the bad blood. And the right ventricle, now the job for the right ventricle is to push blood to the lungs so that the bad blood can get oxygenated and become the good blood, right? So basically, the right ventricle needs to push blood to the lungs to get gas exchange. So the right ventricle is connected to a blood vessel called pulmonary trunk. We'll split to two arteries, the right pulmonary artery that goes toward the right lung. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this as the right lung. And the left pulmonary artery will go toward the left lung. There you go. And then at the lungs, you will have a gas exchange, right? Gas exchange. Now, after the lungs, the blood will become the oxygenated blood, right? The good blood. So now I'm going to switch color to red. So the lungs will send the blood back to the heart through pulmonary veins. Pulmonary veins. Okay. So there are four pulmonary veins in total. So two from each side. So those pulmonary veins will bring blood back to the heart, right? So now you need a chamber, a receiving chamber to receive the blood from pulmonary veins. So that's going to be the left atrium, right? So you will have pulmonary veins. I'm just gonna draw one to indicate all four pulmonary veins, all right? 
the pulmonary veins will bring the blood back to the left atrium. Now it's a good blood, right? So you can see the color is red. And then the left atrium is going to move blood into the left, sorry, the left, ventr the left atrium now is going to move blood to the left ventricle. And then the left ventricle has a very important job. It has to pump blood into the, the blood vessel that's connected to it, the biggest the blood vessel, which is aorta. And then the aorta is going to bring this oxygenated, the, the good blood, to all parts of your body, right? So the cells can receive oxygen. There you go. So that's all the blood vessels that you need to know. Um, so let's do a quick recap. So we have, uh, let me use a different color, uh, some kind of neutral color, maybe, maybe yellow. Yeah, yellow. So we talk about superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, which bring the bad blood back to the right atrium. Right atrium sends blood to the right ventricle, and the right ventricle needs to send blood to the lungs to get a gas exchange. So the right ventricle is connected to the pulmonary trunk, which is split to, to two pulmonary arteries. Uh, each will go to each side to go to each lung. And at the lungs, oh, let me point this out. So you can see the pulmonary arteries, even though they are arteries, they carry deoxygenated, the bad blood, right? So you can't say all arteries have the good blood. That's not true. All right, at the lungs, there's a gas exchange. Now the good, the good blood, now the bad blood becomes the good blood. The, the good blood needs to return to the heart so that the, the heart can pump that blood throughout the body. So the blood will return to the heart from the lungs through the pulmonary veins. Okay? So you can see pulmonary veins actually has oxygenated, the good blood. So not all veins contain deoxygenated blood. Pulmonary veins contain oxygenated blood, the good blood. So pulmonary veins return the blood back to the left atrium and the left atrium will send blood to the left ventricle. Left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta, which will split into smaller arteries, aorta, um, arterials that will uh, bring in the oxygenated blood to literally all cells in our body. Okay, so that's it. That's all the blood vessels. So again, uh, put them you know, into each side. So go from the right side and then the left side. Okay, now uh, let's look at the heart valves. So there are four heart valves. Uh, I'm gonna use, oops, I'm gonna use a uh, color purple to indicate a heart valve. So there are two AV valves. Let's go back here, AV valves. So AV stands for atrial ventricular. So atria, atrial, that refers to atrium, ventricular, you know, uh, the ventricle. So the two AV valves are going to be located between an atrium and a ventricle. So there is one right here between the right atrium and the right ventricle. So that's going to be the tricuspid valve, tricuspid valve. And the other side, the counterpart on the left side is the bicuspid valve or mitral valve. Now you need to know both names because T's could use either name. I have seen T's using mitral valve, but you never know, they could use bicuspid valve, right? So, Keep in mind that you absolutely have to know the names and which one is on which side. So the tri is on the right side and the bi or the mitral is on the left side. Okay, so that's the two AV valves. And then we just have two more valves left. So we have two valves that are between a ventricle and a blood vessel. Remember the two ventricles will pump blood into uh, blood vessels that will go either to the lungs, okay, or to the entire body, right, over here. So there is a valve there to uh, prevent blood backflow. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, the valves are there to prevent blood backflow. You want the, the blood to flow one way, always moving forward. Uh, you do not want the blood to go back. So between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk, 
that's going to be the polymer valve. That's an easy to remember, right? Because it's um, between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. And you can probably figure out what the other valve is called, the valve that's in between the left ventricle and the aorta. That's going to be the aortic valve. There we go. All right. So that's all the structures you need to know about the heart, right? It's not that bad. Again, we went over the chambers, the blood vessels, the four heart valves, and that's it. That's all that's on this diagram. It looks a lot, but once you get down to it, you know, it's not that bad.